Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I want to show you the littlest binary counter you've ever seen. So here we're counting in binary. The reds are zeros, the greens are ones. This is one, one, well actually it's zero, 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 one, one. So that's three, and then we flick this lever, it turns to four, one, zero, zero. One, zero, one is five, one, one, zero is six. So this is a binary counter and it's formed out of these chains of observers and pistons. Now, I haven't been playing a ton of Minecraft lately, and so observers are kind of new to me. So in this video, I want to go over what observers are and why this works. Um, so first of all, observers, uh, they're basically intended to detect block updates. So if I put an observer down, uh, there's a little red part here. That's where the redstone signal comes out, and it reads from this block back here. So if you provide an update back here, it'll send a one tick redstone pulse to the piston or whatever else is there. If there's redstone there, we can still see there's a little one tick pulse, but it's especially useful with sticky pistons because sticky pistons have this very, very long standing, I guess it's a bug, although it's been in the game so long at this point, uh, thing where if you provide a one pulse tick and it's got a block next to it, it'll leave the block behind when it retracts. And so, this is sort of a way to make a, a toggle flip-flop, uh, but it has other applications like this binary counter. Now, another property that you need to know for how the binary counter works is if we put another observer here, the piston's totally capable of pushing it and it'll leave it behind if it gets a one tick pulse. And, uh, and it'll chain together another one tick pulse, but only when it pushes the observer. So you notice when it retracts the observer, the other piston does not does not uh, pulse, but when it extends, you can see it does pulse. Retract, no pulse, extend, yes, pulse. And so that's the basis for which this binary counter works. Every time uh, it, it retracts, it's not going to pulse the next one, but when it extends, there's overflow and it uh, moves on to the next bit, and it, that can kind of cascade down doing a binary increment operation. And I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool that this, uh, this very simple set of two blocks with a space in between creates a binary counter. Now back here, uh, another cool thing you can do with observers, if you have two observers facing away from each other like this, they'll detect the updates from each other uh, from turning on and off and they'll create a little clock. And so over here, oops, over here, I have this binary counter set up next to this. Well, now it's a clock. And so this, this is a binary counter on a clock It'll count up. Uh, this chain of of observers and pistons, this binary counter ends with a chunk of TNT. Now, when this observer retracts, nothing will happen to this TNT. But when it extends, there'll be a pulse. And TNT will go off. So you'll notice that the signal has made it over here so far. But uh, basically, every additional step of the binary counter takes twice as long to activate. So this took a few seconds, uh, and if, in, a, in a few more seconds, we'll see this one get activated for the first time. There we go. But it'll take twice that amount of time for this one, twice that amount of time for this one, twice that amount of time for this one, etc. And so this chain will take a year and a half in order to ignite that piston, or sorry, ignite that TNT. And that is the power of binary counting. Anyway, I just thought this was kind of interesting. I've been playing around with observers and redstone and stuff, and uh, and, and I thought this was really cool. That's about it. Thanks for watching.